Well, it's great to be here. Uh, big room, lots of people. Uh, hello. Today I'm going to talk about coding conventions. But uh, first, let's start with about uh, myself. Uh, my name is Cho. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. Uh, you can find me on GitHub, Twitter, or Mastodon. Um, I currently work as a lead backend engineer at Kraken Tech. Meet Kraken. Uh, he's our mascot and keeping me company during this talk. Uh, also, I edit logos of all the other affiliations. Not all, some that I love most. Uh, some you might uh, recognize. Uh, I am doing um, Django development since 2008. Um, and um, since last winter, I'm serving at the Django Software Foundation Board of Directors. I'm the vice president. Um, the other logo with Python, it's it's Kız Kulesi from Istanbul. Uh, I'm one of the organizers of PyCon Turkey. Um, also, uh, I'm the co-organizer of London Django Meetup since 2018. A proud member of PyLadies London. I'm hoping to meet with some of you uh, in PyLadies lunch tomorrow. Um, also, yeah, I'm a long time Django Girls uh, workshop organizer. So if you want to have, uh, if you want to ask any questions about those affiliations of mine, uh, feel free to find me after the talk or tomorrow. And let's kick it off. Um, so today we are going to talk about coding conventions. But uh, what are coding conventions? Um, so um, coding conventions uh, are uh, like the uh, Zen of Python, uh, if you know about it, like beautiful is better than ugly, explicit is better than implicit, simple is better than complex, and I was pre preparing this talk and I was like, where am I going to stop? Uh, if somebody doesn't stop me, I can go and list all 19, I love them. But yeah, um, similar to Zen of Python, like um, it's a, a list of references and um, those are like things that we keep talking about improving in our code base and keep talking about improving and keep talking about improving. Uh, notes, comments uh, that we copy paste all the time. Like, I don't know you, like I have this uh, big sheet of code review of uh, notes I use very frequently, like copy paste them. The list changes very slowly. Um, sometimes we have uh, design and architecture discussions, and uh, when we reach a consensus, uh, if we reach a consensus, we usually create a coding convention out of it, and also, if possible, introduce a, a custom linter. Basically, it's, it's a laundry list to follow for us to keep our code base clean. Uh, Why? Why do we use it? So, uh, as I mentioned, it's uh, it's a list of guidance. Like it's uh, it's not a mandatory list. It's a guidance. And uh, why we use it? Uh, I, I in Kraken Tech, uh, I work with uh, lovely engineers. We are all brilliant, but we all come from different backgrounds. Uh, we all have different. Uh, coding uh, practices, um, patterns, preferences. And uh, there are like 400, 500 of us working in the same repo, same monolith, Django, Python repo. And um, it's a cause if everybody brings in their own way of uh, coding into the code base. So uh, coding conventions gives us guidance uh, ways of working together better. Uh, it also gives us directions, direction. Like, you know, uh, sometimes when like, you're building something, uh, you need to make a uh, decision. Like, can be as simple as, shall I use this library or that library? But it's a decision. Um, you might have a preference, 
Sometimes you don't have a preference. At those times, both times, we use coding conventions, like if uh, there is a preferred way of doing, it should be there, noted. So we know uh, what to choose. Uh, I also find it uh, quite a good way to give feedback. Like, uh, I think giving feedback using coding con uh, conventions is very easy and smooth. Also, receiving feedback, in, to my experience, is like quite a nice uh, way. I think it's mostly because um, those conventions are a handshake uh, of all team long before that PR is created. So it's not a personal feedback. It's a, uh, it's a convention team already handshake. I think that's, that's why it's a really easy way to uh, give feedback to each other. And um, how we use coding conventions? Uh, we usually just use them during code reviews. We uh, uh, add a link to the relevant coding convention. Uh, and like, at a quick note, we also have emojis, like convention emojis. Like if I put uh, uh, the three book emoji, it means uh, can we please add some doc strings here? Short and easy. Uh, there's a section about it in the doc uh, conventions. Everybody knows about it. It's a like a single detailed explanation in the coding conventions that we can refer from uh, 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 pull requests. Uh, also, like, it's not very convenient to uh, write uh, two, three paragraphs in a code review. Like, it's not for teaching. But this is a good way, like, um, there are references there, and you can just, like, point to them. And uh, another point is, like, um, when you, like, uh, it has a snowball effect. When we want to change something in the code base, it can be an anti-pattern, or we used to do it this way, and it doesn't work anymore. We want to do it that way now, or there's a new library for it. Uh, so we introduce a, a convention. And um, usually when, I don't know if you experience this type of changes, but when you introduce a change, there are usually one, or one person or a team of people uh, trying to push that change. And uh, if nobody pushes, it doesn't happen. But with coding conventions, it has a snowball effect uh, that uh, not in days, but in weeks, like all team starts to push towards that change. You give it as a feedback to a, a colleague, they give it as a feedback to other, and like in two weeks, you see uh, that person that you are 100% sure didn't hear about this new, new convention. You never chat about it with them, and they're like advocating it, asking other colleagues to uh, uh, start using it, make changes. Uh, it's like super nice. I'm not suggesting that you just introduce coding conventions and you can type check your Python repo in three months. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> but uh, it has a, a high impact. Um, and uh, another thing is um, we introduce coding conventions and not necessarily in their best form, but during, uh, by time, like, uh, either by experience or with more input, like uh, we can always go back and change it. So like maybe it starts like this good and it always like gets better because we keep changing, we keep changing uh, wording, we keep changing giving examples uh, or somebody with a little bit more knowledge about that topic joins the team and has a new um, uh, perspective. Uh, so they're ever evolving and it is also uh, quite good and important. And yes, uh, so let's look at some example conventions. So we are going to go over nine, uh, not ten. Uh, it's my top nine. Uh, if you will choose, you will definitely choose another set. If I will choose it last year, I will definitely choose an a different list, or if I will choose it next year, I'll definitely choose a different list, but this is what we have at the moment, you know, to play with me, let's go. So, the first one uh, is uh, about standard commit message format, so, um, at first look, it's easy, um, okay, use a summary, capitalize, short, and add more detailed explanatory text if necessary. I have seen, 
I started to use this a year ago when I joined uh, Kraken Tech. And back then it was difficult for me. Like I feel like I'm just like filling in a form, just repeating some words from my function names. Didn't feel comfortable. Didn't feel as I was doing a good job. But uh, by time, I learned how to use it. Uh, and it taught me how to write better code. Because um, we don't write code only to deliver features. We write code so that like all of us can work on a code base together and deliver features together. So half of the time, you build a feature. But other half of the time, you write code for other people, other developers to build on top of it, build next to it. And if I'm writing the code uh, for others, I should also write some notes to others, like, what does this code do? And why it's introduced now, not last month, or why it's not happening next month. So let's, let's take a look. Um, so According to the template, the uh, comment message should follow the sentence, if applied, this comment will. Uh, add use case uh, to record a good, good sales chart. OK, it adds a use case. Why is this change needed? Prior to this change, we didn't have a use case to save charges that are created under a purchase object. OK. And who, what, well, how does it address the issue? Uh, this change introduces a new use case, which creates charges, and also we edit the test. But, uh, this gives a good history. So when I go back, when somebody or I go back later, I, why shall this uh, make uh, this change? There is a clear explanation. And by time, uh, I've seen it on, uh, uh, on me and on each team member I work with. You start to write better code better code, more uh, explana explainable code. And when you deliver it with a message like this, it's super easy for others to understand it more. So if you're going to leave the talk with like one thing, uh, let, it, let it be this. Uh, you can also find this template in the uh, blog by David Winterbottom, uh, the title is a useful template for comment messages. You can set it as a template, and like every time you do git comment, this template will show up. And uh, definitely use it, because like I started using it a year ago. Still, if I don't have the template, I don't follow the schema, and like magic doesn't happen. So strongly suggest you to start using this template uh, in your git comments. Okay, uh, next one. So I said the list would be different. Like last year, this was two years ago, this was uh, on top of my list. I wasn't even working in Kraken Tech back then. I was with another company. We were using conventions there as well. Um, so make each comic atomic. Uh, what does it mean? It means like in every comic, the test suite should pass and you should deliver deployable production code. Like one change, but a commit shouldn't break your code. I think it is very, very, very useful. Uh, changing one thing at a time makes reveal a lot easier. Also, it makes you deliver robust and organized code. So, uh, second top of the list, try to follow it. it it's a recommendation from me. It really improves uh, the code base quality a lot. Next one, naming conventions. I don't know you, but uh, I quite, uh, so I'm not a native speaker, and when I'm naming stuff, uh, I have a hard time. I used to have a harder time, uh, but still. 
And this one, like, I keep coming back. Um, so, it says, favor singular nouns for class names. So, let's say you're creating a product model. If you call it products, then you have to say, this object is a products. But if you choose as your class name a singular noun like product, then it's grammatically correct to say, this object is a product. Also, like, I don't know if you also experience the same thing. I find myself trying to write that type of uh, um, function names a lot, like get user details list. Like, plural, then list, like, what, what's then, like, then you need to resolve it because the list will return details, not a detail. So it's like, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, so I quite like uh, this convention too. More naming conventions. So um, I don't know you, but uh, I also have a problem with dates. Like whenever I need to name a date, I'm like, what should I pick the name as? And uh, uh, in I, uh, in Kraken Tech, the main repo we work with has like 1,050 tables, and it saves me a lot of time to know that I can find the created at time step under created at field at each table. It saves a lot of not, uh, time. Uh, pick one, try using it. It will keep your code base uh, consistent, and you can introduce uh, more naming conventions, but um, this we are moving away from naming conventions. So uh, another one. Um, so it gives us guidance when we, I said, when we need to make a choice between one pattern or another. This is another one I like. Uh, I quite like. Uh, this keeps our module namespace a lot cleaner. We uh, import, we do import modules. We don't import objects. Also, like if you uh, have, um, if you have a little bit, it doesn't have to be a big code base, a little bit, bit uh, uh, mid-size uh, code base. It also helps with like, okay, this X module, but uh, uh, X object, what, which module? that I imported from. Uh, so uh, I think this also uh, makes uh, reading code uh, a lot easier and it keeps a consistency between files as well. So uh, another favorite of mine. And it uh, goes on. I don't know if you also had problems uh, with uh, mock patch. Uh, but it also uh, helped me solve uh, all my nightmares with uh, mocking uh, objects uh, in the test. Uh, it uh, helps to write simpler and isolated unit tests. So really, really recommend this one also. So um, more guidance. So. Not all conventions work uh, all the time, Mike. Okay, we can um, import modules, not objects, but are we going to do it like all the time? No, like this is the next convention. It tells you, okay, sometimes it doesn't make, like uh, for example, if it's a standard library object or et cetera, it's still okay to do it. And there are some examples. So like uh, you don't have to, uh, give very specific um, direction and stick with it. You can like create onto directions, detail it, give examples, and now everybody's happy. Uh, another one I quite uh, like telling the story is that, like this is coming from. Uh, it's very recent. Uh, we had an incident uh, a few weeks ago. Not an incident. Like we woke up one morning and a few of the a few developers couldn't fetch anything from GitHub. Uh, they were receiving an error about uh, 
uh, reference error. Uh, so uh, we do deal with those type of problems over Slack. So there was a Slack thread, like seven to one messages, like not one-liners, two paragraph, one paragraph, like long messages. Seven, eight senior developer spent I don't know how many hours to fix this problem that's blocking I don't know how many developers for a couple of hours. And at the end, uh, I, it turned out somebody uh, pushed uh, a branch uh, using a uppercase version of a common prefix we use in branch names. And it's okay on Linux systems, which is uh, case sensitive. Like there is, uh, it was for the French, uh, so it says FRE in capital, something else. FRE on cap capital, something else. So Linux is very happy under uppercase FRE, there is these branches under lowercase FRI, there are other branches. But on MacOS, I own Apple, which has a case insensitive file system. There is this suffix with this list of uh, branches under it, and exactly the same keyword with a different list. So, like, it didn't know what to do. Uh, now uh, we have a convention, so we only use lowercase branch names, and uh, also we introduce a uh, um, linter so that you can actually push uh, uppercase branch names. Uh, pipeline will complain. You cannot merge your branch. So uh, I think it's not pipeline. It's a pre commit hook, but uh, we also have a, a check for it now. So that's uh, also a good example how we use coding convention and how they uh, evolve. Uh, another one I quite like. Um, do not surprise your reviewers with urgent complex pull requests. So, um, yeah, if you have a time sensitive pull request, ask for feedback earlier. And let's change it. If you have a mid size to big size pull request, doesn't have to be urgent, ask for help earlier. Why? Because you don't want to surprise your reviewers. I don't know if it was this uh, convention, it was after this convention or not, but like uh, our team has this good um, tradition, like you can totally open a draft PR, which means like you're asking for early feedback and the reviewer will probably uh, uh, give you, the reviewer will give you um, some feedback towards the direction of the code and not going to like tackle with all the details because they know that that's an early version and you will send a final version before you merge it. So uh, complex PRs, urgent or not, ask for feedback as early as possible. Uh, and the last one. Okay, we said we are not writing the code only for delivering features or building software, we write it for each other to build uh, on top of it. Uh, doc strings, I'm not going to tell you about uh, why you should doc strings. I'm going to tell you how this convention helps uh, my team to write more doc strings. So actually, um, uh, in the code base, uh, you don't have to write doc strings for every function. Just uh, one set of functions, we call them use cases, it's at the application layer, uh, because those are important uh, functions to the system. Uh, but other than that, this is just the uh, guidance, but it really helps, like it gives you a starting point uh, to write doc strings. Uh, and I, Imagine someone just telling you, okay, just finish the sentence. This function will. You can finish the sentence, and it's as easy as writing the doc string when you have this convention. Or when somebody shares it with you. Um, it, it goes on a bit. Uh, we actually have very explicit uh, like 
um, definition of how you should write it. Uh, it really helps, like, um, I already told, I'm not good at picking names, I'm not also good at writing dog things, but with this, uh, it encourages me a lot to write more dog strings. It's easier. There's a template, I use it. You might be great and very disciplined in writing dog strings, but don't remember, you might have like fellow colleagues like me, a little bit of encouragement makes your code base a lot more better. And um, this is the end of our examples. Let's uh, move towards the last section. So what you can take home. You can take home uh, the conventions. So uh, I already told you, I think I started using coding conventions three years ago. What I did is, <coughs> I didn't know this would happen. What I did is like, uh, there, there's this open source GitHub repo with a set of conventions that uh, Kraken Tech team uses. Uh, two years before I joined the team, I didn't know about this repo. I just forked it. Uh, I think I, I keep 70% of it because like, they're, they're, they're good conventions. And we uh, edited the other 30%. We add our own. And how it uh, worked with us, like, um, I introduced it and asked my other team members to start contrib contributing it. And uh, I mentioned before, like, it's a, it's a great way of receiving feedback. I don't know, like, this is just one experience I had, but they, they loved it. They really uh, uh, almost, like, instantly uh, accepted it. And they started to, like, also make like suggestions. I'm like, okay, that's a repo. If you have a suggestion, open a PR, and we will discuss and change the or add the convention. And um, yeah, it really worked fine. So uh, you can just make it your own. Um, and uh, another thing, I think, um, like, uh, it, again, it's it's not a mandatory list. It's a guidance, and I we use it during uh, code reviews. Uh, but we also try to introduce like linters and auto formatters. So for some stuff, you actually don't need to write a convention even. You can just introduce an auto formatter to your pre-commit uh, or pipeline and uh, it will do most of the work. But uh, for example, I don't know if you can read it, but this is a custom flag A check. Uh, so it, it runs um, this application, uh, um, this custom check on application layer uh, use cases, use case functions. So uh, each line represents one rule uh, from the doc string convention I showed earlier, like um, step by step, line by line, like first line should be in imperative mode, first line should end with period. And yeah, um, I find it quite uh, useful, and um, I also figured writing custom linters is not that uh, difficult. Uh, that might be another uh, topic for uh, another talk, but today I'm going to finish uh, with a quote from our internal, the private coding conventions repo, so it says, Everyone is happier when the code we interact with is clean and consistent. Even if it doesn't match your own style perfectly, consistency is the most important thing. And that's all for me. Thank you very much for listening. So if you have any questions, you can uh, try to stand up and ask. I have one question, though. Um, like uh, the previous talk, like uh, which one would be the tenth of the conventions? Hmm? Which one would be the, the tenth of the convention? The next one. Uh, the next convention. Yeah. That um, I don't know. Probably somebody's like uh, already introducing something. Uh, I don't know. Sorry. Maybe we can discuss it later. <laughs>
because I have another million of questions. <laughs> I would say let's give an applause for uh, Charles. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. Uh, talk.